I talk about Sony Alpha cameras on this channel a ton because those are the camera systems that I've been using over the last six years to create content full time in a variety of production environments. And there are actually in 2024, a handful of cameras that I'd highly recommend that come under the thousand dollar price point to start your career in video production. That's what this video is all about. Let's dive right into the first camera on our list, which is the Sony A5100. I just picked up this camera last year in 2023 for $225. And I've been blown away at this camera's performance. My favorite thing about the A5100 is it's the first camera that introduced out of the box the XAVCS codec, which is just a higher quality codec that Sony provides to get you better video quality straight out of camera. You get 1080p video at 24 frames, 30 frames, and 60 frames per second, and all of those frame rates look really good. Two of the main highlights of this camera that I really appreciate are first, the fully flip up screen to be able to film yourself when recording video. If you're someone who likes to do YouTube style videos like this, I'm currently shooting on the FX X3 and I have the monitor flipped toward me and I also have a production monitor over to my left over here. So I need to be able to see myself while I'm filming to make sure my composition and exposure are correct. The A5100 gives you that ability at a super affordable price point around the $200, $250 price to be able to be able to film yourself and not have to rely on an additional piece of equipment like a production monitor to record yourself. That's a huge win in 2024 as people are trying to break into this YouTube sort of content creation niche. This is also great for shooting vertical content for social media like YouTube Shorts or Instagram Reels. You can flip that screen out to be able to see yourself while you record. With the A5100, you also get a high quality touch screen. It's a little bit limited in its functionality, but you can use it for even touch focus, which is great. I ran a test in my review of the A5100 that I did on this channel of the touch focus capabilities, and it actually tracks pretty well. You can see here on the screen, I'll put that clip up so you can see what it's like. A couple cons would be you don't get any picture profiles. You're not gonna get anything like the Sony S Cinetone picture profile or S Log 3, none of those picture profile options. You do get creative styles that you can bake in. So you can change it to like a vivid or a portrait creative style, which I actually used to do in the NEX series cameras. It's also very small. So if you have bigger hands and you like to have a beefier body, this camera is not gonna be necessarily for you. And you also don't have a viewfinder to be able to view your exposure through a viewfinder if it's bright outside and light is hitting the back of your LCD screen, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to see if you're someone who really likes to rely on a viewfinder for shooting. Coming in at number two is the Sony A6000. The reason this camera is on the list is because it is one of the most readily available cameras on the used camera market. If you look on Facebook Marketplace or eBay or shopgoodwill.com, if Craigslist is still a thing, you could look there as well, but you'll see this camera everywhere. Even just talk to like your neighbor or a friend. Somebody might just have this camera laying around and they don't use it anymore. So it's something you'll be able to find really easy easily for the $300 to $350 price point. If you see one that's higher than that, if one's $400 or $450, I wouldn't touch it. I, I think that's too high for what this camera is. It's a 10 year old camera. So I'd shoot for that $300 price range. This camera actually features the exact same sensor as the Sony A5100. So you're gonna get the same image quality out of these two cameras. You'll get 1080p video up to 60 frames a second. You'll get the XAVCS codec, which was actually added a little bit later after a firmware update was released for the A6000. The main difference between the two cameras, the A5100 and the A6000 are gonna be the A6000 has that viewfinder. So if you're someone who loves the viewfinder, the A6000 is for you and the A5100 has that flip up screen and the touch function capabilities. So as you can see of the footage that I've put on the screen of the A6000 and the A5100, this is a great option for beginner videographers who are just looking to start building a portfolio and getting experience shooting video. The number three camera on our list is going to be the original Sony A6000. In 2024, you should be able to pick this camera up anywhere from $350 to $500 used. This is a very old camera and it's actually the very first full frame mirrorless camera that the world ever saw. Saw. So what this camera will do for you is introduce you to the full frame format of the Sony ecosystem. So you'll begin to get familiarity with what it's like to shoot on these full frame camera bodies. You do get 1080p video up to 60 frames a second. One of the cons though, is that you're still gonna be in the AVC HD video codec, which is that older codec that we saw with the NEX series cameras. Now, it still looks okay, especially coming out of this full frame field of view, this really high quality sensor that the A7 has. The video looks a lot better than it does in some of those NEX series cameras, but it's just something to be aware of that this is an older codec, so it doesn't retain as much quality information baked into the file as it would with the XAVC-S codec. Another big benefit of the Sony A7 is you won't get a crop for your lenses. So if you want to purchase full frame glass and transfer that glass later down the road to your better camera bodies, you'll be 
be able to maximize the potential out of your lens lineup and not have to deal with the crop factor of some of these APS-C camera bodies. The autofocus on the Sony a7 is not the greatest for video, but if you're someone that's okay shooting on manual focus lenses, or you wanna use older kind of cinema lenses or older style vintage film lenses, this is a great option for you to use because the autofocus kind of suffers. So you could just lean into that manual focus look. Overall, if you picked up a Sony a7 in 2024, you would not be disappointed with the image quality you get out of that camera right off the bat. Hey, real quick, if you're someone who wants to start a career in video production, but aren't sure where to begin, click the link in the description of this video to get instant access to my brand new free online course, how to start a video production company with zero dollars. This course will teach you what skills to focus on acquiring, how to build a quality portfolio, where to find your first clients and much more. We've already had about a hundred students go through this online course and received a lot of great feedback. So if you're someone who's ready to take your video production career seriously, click the link in this description to get free access to that online course. Now back to the video. Sliding into the number four slot is the Sony a7S II. This camera is amazing in so many regards. This camera really changed the trajectory of what Sony was viewed as in the camera world. During the mid 2010s, this camera reigned supreme as the low light king for video creators. If you were a music video shooter or a low light documentarian shooter, if you like producing short films, this was the camera that you took on set with you. If you didn't have a lot of money to spend on high quality lighting and you didn't have a huge budget to work with, this was the camera that you gravitated towards. I've used this camera a ton in my professional career and I also was a freelance editor for many years. And this was the main camera that several of the production companies that I edit for chose to use for all of their client work. You get 4K video up to 30 frames a second, which is amazing. So this will be really helpful for a lot of interview style work. So if you're someone who shoots a lot of talking head videos, having 4K 30 and 24 frames per second is gonna be essential for you video creators out there. You also get 1080p up to 120 frames a second, which is awesome. You can use that for some super slow motion stuff for social media or for corporate marketing promos. This is just a great option for a lot of reasons. You do get the great XAVCS codec with the A7S II, so you're gonna get that higher quality codec, which is really nice. You do get picture profiles in the Sony A7S II. So this is uh, gives you the ability to shoot in like S-Log2 or S-Log3. And I wouldn't really recommend this if you are someone who doesn't know exactly what you're doing and you don't know how to color grade. But I think the main reason why this is important is it sort of future proofs. If you really want to continue to use this for years down the road, it's 2024, you could even use this to like 2027 for professional production work if you begin to understand all of the capabilities that this camera actually holds. The autofocus on the a7S II is not the greatest, but if you're someone who's okay with shooting in manual focus, it's gonna be a great option for you even in 2024. You already know I had to insert a bonus camera here as an honorable mention, and that honorable mention goes to the Sony ZV-E10. It's a very similar price range right now as the Sony A7S II, so you could kind of go either way with these cameras. They're anywhere between $550 to $650. The A7S II might be a little bit more expensive, but with the Sony ZV-E10, you get a lot of great things like it's the latest iteration of the A6000 series. So like you're gonna get similar performance to the A6400, A6600, those kind of APS-C cameras. The ZV-E10 will be very similar to those. You get 4K video up to 30 frames a second. You get 1080p video up to 120 frames a second. So you can see they're very similar, the A7S2 and the ZV-E10 as far as specifications. You do get a fully articulating LCD screen, which is a huge benefit to be able to be able to record yourself. The A7S2 does not have that so you're gonna have to have an, a monitor to be able to record yourself for any sort of YouTube style or social media setup. And with the ZV-E10 you also get USB-C streaming which is a huge feature that I really love and it's something that's been included in a lot of Sony's newer mirrorless cameras. So that honorable mention goes to the Sony ZV-E10. The final camera on our list taking the number five slot is the Sony a7 III. This camera is near and dear to my heart because it's the first camera that I actually used when entering into the Sony mirrorless world in 2018. You're going to get a lot of the similar specs that I just mentioned out of the ZV-E10 and the A7S II, which is 4K up to 30 frames a second. So 4K, 24, and 30. You get 1080p video up to 120 frames per second, but it just looks way better coming out of this camera than it does out of the other cameras. You do get the higher quality XAVCS codec, which is super beneficial. And you also get picture profiles. So you're able to shoot in Sony S-Log2 and S-Log3 with this camera. Again, most of the cameras on this list are 8-bit colors. So it's gonna be a little bit more difficult 
for you to retain a lot of that color information in S-Log3. So there's a ton of videos online about how to leverage S-Log3 and S-Log2 in these older Sony mirrorless cameras. I'd encourage you to look at those if you need further support. This camera has made me tens of thousands of dollars shooting weddings and concerts and corporate marketing promos and everything in between. This is an amazing camera for production work and you're gonna get an amazing photo camera as well out of this, but this is focused on video. That's just a benefit for this camera is you get amazing stills as well. So that's my list. If you're someone who has under a thousand dollars to spend, I would choose one of these five options or that bonus ZV-E10 as the first camera that you use to enter into the Sony mirrorless world. If you choose one of those cameras, there really is no reason that you can't be on a path to be able to get paid for your creative services in no time. Thanks so much for taking time to watch this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I have a ton more videos about Sony Alpha cameras and video production and much more on this channel. Thanks so much guys. I'll see you in the next one. Much love.